Max Reward Kimball, the Disney animator who never grew up. Kimball's home is his playground. The train he designed for Walt Disney's Dumbo has a full-size cousin in his own backyard. Now and then, Ward and his son John engineer a ride for the Kimball clan. Thrill every jack and Jill. Every time it's funny, little whistle sound. Everybody hurries to the circus town. Time for lemonade and cracker jack. Casey Jr. Jack Casey. Ward Kimball's fascinations are rocket ships and trains and toys that come alive. You can see it in his animation. And you can see it in the pages of the Disney Family Album. Number one on track two, okay, fine. Welcome to the Grizzly Flats Depot. People ask me, how'd you get started with railroading, Ward? And I said, I've always been interested ever since I was a, a kid. My folks would always take me up to meet the engineer at the end of the run. He'd get down off the runway and take off his glove and covered with coal soot and shake hands. That was the biggest thrill of my life. And when they had a train sequence in a Disney picture, they'd always call on me and say, what kind of a locomotive? And sometimes I would draw the model, like Casey Jr. One of the first things I animated uh, involving a railroad was uh, Mr. Toad. And it's that whole sequence there I had a lot of fun doing uh, that involved an English-type train. <laughs> During the middle 50s, I was fortunate to be the director and producer on the three Disney space travel pictures, Man in Space, Tomorrow the Moon, and Mars and Beyond. And I worked with the space experts uh, from Huntsville, Werner von Braun, Ernst Stuhlinger, Willie Lay, and these uh, caused quite a stir, uh, especially in Washington when uh, President Eisenhower saw man in space, he realized that none of his generals in the Pentagon knew what it was all about. And would you believe he asked Walt if he could borrow a print of that picture to run f for the brass in the Pentagon. He flew them all in for a couple of weeks and ran this every day. And I always got a kick out of that. After I'd been retired for about 10 years, I got a call from Wed. They were designing Epcot, wanting to know if I'd come over and lend them a hand on designing a transportation history ride for the General Motors building. We had a lot of fun on that section, and it gave me a chance to apply my, my uh, hobby of transportation history. Well, let's take a little ride down the Grizzly Road right away on the old Irish Mail. This is an early inspection hand car that the guys used to go out on the track and make sure everything was okay and as we go by on my left here is our water tower an old 1880 windmill here's a very early cattle car and here's a pile of tiles and here's our stack of wood here's an old model t saw we used to saw up our scrap lumber and uh now we're now approaching the Grizzly Flats engine shed, where we store all of our steam and passenger equipment. This locomotive is the pride and joy of the Grizzly Flats Railroad. It's an old 1881 Baldwin Mogul. 
made in Philadelphia, USA. And uh, we bought it in 1938. We took it all apart and restored it. This locomotive has a very beautiful bell. I'm going to ring it for you so you can see and hear it ring. Isn't that pretty? Now let's inspect our 1883 passenger car. It's all made out of wood, filled with plush seats. This used to run on the Carson and Colorado Railroad in Nevada, one of the historical old narrow gauges. Come on, let's see inside. It's a great old car. We, I think we paid $50 for it. They were burning these out in Nevada and scraping the iron out for scrap. And that just broke my heart. So I saved this one. $50 worth. The first vacation that Walt Disney ever took in his life, he did with me, and it was 1948 at the Chicago Railroad Fair. And the nurse told him, he says, you're working too hard. You're coming down here on Saturday and Sundays and inspecting storyboards. You've got to relax. And he says, you know, that guy Kimball seems to be relaxed all the time. So he called me up, and when he said, this is Walt. Uh, how'd you like to go back uh, to the railroad fair. I couldn't believe it. First of all, he never took time off. And so when I really knew it was Walt talk, I said, sure, sure. In Arizona, uh, the conductor came to Walt and says, how would you, you guys like to ride in the cab of the diesel locomotive? And so we climbed up into the cab and Walt got to pull the whistle for all of the little crossing signs. And here again, he was like a little kid. He'd never done anything like this. And we had the time of our lives riding that di diesel through the state of Arizona on our way to Chicago. Now I'd like to show you our firehouse. This is where we store all of our ancient fire equipment that we use from time to time with a jazz band called the Firehouse 5 Plus 2. Let's go in and take a look. This first piece of equipment is our fire chief's car, an old 1911 two-cylinder Maxwell. This always led the parade. We would follow it in our big fire truck with the band. Now, over here is one of the earliest pictures taken of the Firehouse 5 Plus 2, made up mostly of Walt Disney artists who liked music, played jazz. And here's you, yours truly, as he looked playing the trombone over 30 years ago. me why I show you the inside of the house. I think you'll get a kick out of it. You know when my grandchildren come over here, they, they play with all the toys and the gadgets. And the whole place is full of things I think you'll like. Let's see if anybody's at home. Entrevue. Come on in. This is Archie, our greeter. Say hello, Art. Bonjour. Well, let's see. Over here, of course, Anybody who works at Disney's got to have a few Mickey Mouse items. This is Mickey and Minnie I bought from my wife when we had our first children way back in the late 30s. And they're riding in an old uh, 1880 Velocipede. Along the mantel here are a few toys from my extensive toy collection. Up here is a giant harmonica. You'll notice there are a lot of musical instruments in this room. And in fact, the whole place because I've always liked music. My kids play instruments. And I guess that's why um, uh, Disney gave me musical sequences to do on some of the features, like Three Caballeros and the 
award-winning toot whistle plunk and boom. Did you ever stop to think when the band plays rink dink where all the music comes from? From a toot and a whistle and a plunk and a boom. Really, we took the toot, which were all the brass instruments, the whistle, the uh, reeds, oboe and so forth, uh, the plunk or the string instruments, guitars, everything, and boom, of course, was the percussion. And by 